Hi my friends! I'm back to make more art videos. I know I took all summer off, um, but I'm back. And I tried to teach you observation um, from a reference. from So when you're looking at something, you can know how to recreate it. And I kind of just jumped into it, and there were a lot of holes, and I, I'm sorry for that. So I thought about it, and I realized that I need to teach you the elements of art so that you know exactly what you're looking at, how to identify the different components of artwork. So once you see it, then you'll be able to pick it apart and then put it back together. So I'll be teaching you out of my Art Fundamentals book. This was my college level two-dimensional design textbook. It has all of the elements in here. It's very thorough and I love it. Um, we'll be starting with line, shape, color, texture, um, contrast, space, and value. Um, and I'll be doing an in-depth video on those when I get my new dry erase board so I can go in-depth on each of those elements so that you can know what you're seeing. Um, and it's really important that you know what these things are. It's very basic information, you know, the different types of line, the different types of shapes, you already know this. But once you know about it from an art perspective, it'll permanently shape your brain. You will never not know these things once I teach them to you and then your world will be forever changed and you'll start to look at the world uh, with the eyes of a more trained artist. So I'm doing prep work for the video um, where I will go in depth to teaching you these elements but I'm gonna start with line and shape because I only have about 45 minutes for each video. Um, I have a fireplace going. It's now cold enough to where I can have a fire every night if I like, and I do like. So I figured that would be a nice background for you guys while I do this. And I'm going to go in depth into the next video, um, but I'll also be sort of explaining what I'm doing here. I'm going to make a very generic landscape and I'm going to do it with shapes and lines because those are shape, line, and color. Those are the three major building blocks of everything. Um, buildings, nature, a face, it's shapes and lines. So I'm going to start with that. and. Um, so I'm just going to make a video of me painting and explaining those things. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm just going to paint it. I got some dribbles there, but it's okay. I don't know if watercolor paper is the right paper for this, but that's okay. So the first major shape this is going to be is a rectangle. And you can see that it's like the shape of a rectangle. Now there are different different types of shapes. There are rectilinear, which means it's a shape that has straight lines. So your squares, rectangles, 
triangles, and whatnot. So I have a rectangle here. But there's also a line. There's also a line here. It's a straight horizontal line. And this will separate my sky from whatever I do down here. Um, yeah, so let's see. A two dimensional shape is called a plane. It's very flat, has no shading. It's just a flat shape. If you combine planes, then you can get a three-dimensional shape. You know, if you put uh, four rectilinear planes together, you will get a three-dimensional rectangle. And I'm going to bring this a little lower. I'm using very thin gouache paint. I could not find my watercolors, so I don't know where those are. And there are different types of lines. There's thin lines, like this dribble here, and then there are thick lines. This is not only a rectangle, but it could also be considered a thick line. And there are curvy lines, there are angled lines, I'm going to make some mountains, and when you use diagonal lines, they convey emotion. Lines that go upward, like that, those generally tend to be uplifting emotions. And if a line goes downwards, it still look, kind of looks like it's going upwards, but if, if it's going downwards, it can kind of um, connotate, is that the right word? Um, a, a heavier emotion or sadness. Um, so you can use lines to convey emotion, guide an eye across the canvas, all sorts of things you can do. Hi, Tuxie. So I have my sky, then I'm going to paint some mountains. And mountains are very, they have emotion. When you see them, they're very striking. I'm just going to make some, some very jagged, <laughs> very jagged mountains here. Mountains that have very sharp angular lines like this are very dramatic. I haven't painted in a while, so <laughs> a little, little rusty looking, but that's okay. And these mountains, way dramatic here, way big. Big, tall mountains. Uh, maybe that could be like a little valley. I'll fill it in, and it'll look like the Grand Teton, sort of, sort of. 
And what I wanted to really do with this video is show you how when you put one plane down, so this rectangle, this blue rectangle, is a flat plane. But when you layer another plane, such as these flat two-dimensional triangles, in front of another plane, it pushes the first plane back, creating distance and depth. And you can do that. You can create depth with things that are two-dimensional. Now that I've done my sharply angled dramatic mountains, I want to create something that's not as dramatic, something more peaceful and calming. So how would I do that? I'm going to create rolling hills. with curvy lines, wavy lines. And this will be another plane in my painting. And look, we made another thin line. So we have a thick line here and a thin. One of the more important uh, elements of art to me, very important, is contrast. If you can create a work of art with a lot of contrast in it, it's going to be more visually appealing than something that's kind of more harmonious. But if you want something that's harmonious and peaceful and just sort of, you know, beautiful and calming to look at, then, you know, just have things be sort of muted and keep things the same. And I'm going to want this green to come all the way down. So I'm going to do that. And see how just with a couple wavy lines, you, you, you know that this is rolling hills of grass, just with green and waviness. So that's how you begin to formulate your ideas, is with these elements. And when you're painting, the things that are farther away are going to be lighter than the things that are in the front. That's just how it is. Um, but as you can see, mine's a little darker back here because I painted over black. Um, so I'll just keep adding some green and some black, I guess. So speaking a little bit more, excuse me, more about contrast, 
is there's light and dark. I like to play those up. I like to play up uh, contrasting colors, blue and orange, green and red, purple and yellow. And it just makes things jump out more. And it's more visually exciting. So I have this. And now this is a plane. Another element of art is texture. There's implied texture and there's actual texture. Implied texture means you're making it look like it has texture with your brush strokes. And I will show you some implied texture right now. I'm going to make some snow on the mountains. I don't know if snow is the best way to go about making texture because snow is kind of soft. So yeah, we'll scratch that. I'm not doing texture. Um, one way to convey texture would be with line. You can make small little, little grassy things. Now, if you were to make actual texture, you could glue some real grass or little wood pieces onto your canvas, and then you will have actual real texture. I love texture in paintings. It's so fun. It's like making a world pop. So in addition to thin lines and thick lines, you also have long, long lines, and short lines, like what I'm doing here. And see, I can put in some small, short lines, and then you can put your brush sideways and make thicker, thicker lines. Now, I'm going to add a rectilinear shape, uh, a long rectangle, to make a tree trunk. Like I said, a flat shape is a plane. So if I add another plane to my painting, it's going to push the previous planes back. So I'm going to put a tree here. So this is kind of a wide line, but it's also a very thin rectangle, very thin long rectangle. And can you sort of see how it pushed the mountains and the sky back? It's pretty cool. And for contrast, like I said, I'm going to make a thinner tree that starts even closer than that one. Not much thinner, but yeah. And then, now that I have that line, 
I have the straight, thick and thin tree, br tree branches. I'm going to make some random tree branch lines. And this will also help to push the mountains back. And you can just make random lines. You can do as many as you want. You can make a tree that has no branches. It's up to you. That branch would actually go behind that tree since it's behind it. Sort that out. I gotta adjust my fire here. I don't think I did that right. So I did do it right. This is my fire tool. It's a teaspoon that I used to just poke it with. Seems to work. All right, back to painting. Let me get some tape. I'll tape this up so it doesn't fall down. a few more tree branches and then I'll move on. See, it's just lines. You can make them thick, like this one, or in 
as you to make it thinner you just use less pressure on the brush and now to make texture which is a very important element of art how to make leaves leaves are kind of texture texture and shape and line so all of the elements sort of work together you know lines form shapes and it's pretty great I love it so to create my little shapes here I'm just gonna dab into some green and I'm just gonna dab do, 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 do. and you can you can make each leaf if you want, but for this video, I'm just going to show you. Um, doo, 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 doo. Really fast how to do it. I also have... I have this brush. You can see how it's like has two brushes in one kind of. So this is good for making leaves. Make some two at a time. Maybe they're two different trees, so one has a different kind of leaves. The element of contrast. Contrast, contrast, contrast creates interest, visual interest, and it's really good to do. So there you go. Something else I could do to make more texture would be to go in with a little black, a little brown, and just make some bark. And trees have texture. So this kind of makes it look a little more rough. Kinda. I'm doing it very fast. I only have about 12, 15 minutes left. That's fine. That's a good time. And then for more line, if I want more things, I can put in little birds. I can make little, just with two curved lines, you can make the shape of a bird. And he has a friend. So just like that, you have some birdies. Now, there is another type of shape. It's called biomorphic. And these are also called abstract shapes or organic. So we have rectilinear shapes, which are the, sh the straight edge um, planes, like rectangles and squares. And then curvilinear shapes are shapes that have curved lines, like circles, ovals, stuff like that. But a biomorphic shape is freeform. It has curvy lines all around it, it's natural. You find these shapes in nature all the time. Clouds, you can make a little pond. I might make a little pond to show you. But right now I'm going to make some clouds. And you can make them textured to look fluffy. But I'm just going to make a plane, a, curvil a biomorphic plane. 
biomorphic organic plane. So like I said, biomorphic organic shapes are just random. They can be whatever you want. So it's going to be like doo doo doo. And always make as many sound effects <laughs> as you can while you do this because it's very fun. Can you see that? Okay, you can't really see my biomorphic cloud shapes. So I'm going to make a pond. So you can see. So my pond will be it's just random it can be whatever you want but it does have curvy lines and then to show that to push the biomorphic organic shape of the pond back. I'm going to draw some grass in front of it. And then some behind, just for more texture. So we have contrast in the shapes of the mountains and the hills. We have curvy lines, straight lines. It is so warm right here. And now to demonstrate how to put planes together to make a three-dimensional looking shape. I'm also going to demonstrate how to use contrasting colors to really make your artwork stand out. So red and green, when you put red next to green, it makes the cones in your eyes bounce around. I don't know why, that's just how it works. So. I'm going to make a little red barn. way too little. Way too little. But that's okay. So if you've seen the movie Boiler Room, I'm sure you've heard the quote, always be closing. It's also from another movie that I've never seen, I think Wall Street or something. But what I like to say is always be forming. Always try to be forming your shapes. 
with your brush strokes. So here we have a plane. And now, see how the red stands out against the green? It's really pretty. And now to try to make it a three-dimensional shape, let's see, I think I'd have to make a plane here. Like that. And then I'm going to have a roof on top of it, but I'll show you using um, I'll make that first. So as you can see, this is a plane right here. This is a plane, a flat rectilinear shape. You can also have curvilinear um, planes just rounded. So I'm going to paint my little barn. Oops. I'm just going to keep this line here. here. Just so I can see what I'm doing. So you guys can see what I'm doing too. Cool. Now that we have that, I wanted to make the roof of my barn. With brown. I'm going to put out some brown. And the roof will also be made with planes as well to construct a three-dimensional shape. Let's see. So my plane will come from here down. And then it will come up here. So here we have a plane. It's great. And you just have to assume that on the other side, there's another plane forming the roof, you know, like that, at an angle. And that will come down there. And then, you know, there's a plane here. This, this triangular shape. outline so you can see. Cool. Now to add some texture, I'll go in with some white and some brown so it's not too white. And to make tiles I'm going to use my little dual dual brushy brush and in the direction of the tiles I'm just gonna go like that Oh, it's hot, but I love being next to the fire. 
And then, my house needs a door. So I'm gonna make a little door. And it will need windows. Just some squares, just some just some basic squares. But you can make yours rectangular or however you want them. And my door will be I guess I'll make it brown. And now to enhance the contrast, to make the windows more visually appealing, I'm gonna make some thin lines. Thick lines usually convey strength while thinner lines are more brittle or delicate fragile looking lines. So we have these thick shapes and I'm going to use some thin lines to sort of enhance the shapes and to make it stand out. Oh, yeah, so we have some good elements here. Yeah, I, I think this is a good good place to stop. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, be happy to answer anything. Um, now that you know these things, I'm sure you'll start to see things in a different way. Like you'll start to see the lines of a car differently. Um, and that's great. Always train your mind. Always be studying art and dissecting the world in a way that makes, um, makes you see the beauty in things more, I guess. Um, well, cool. It was nice making this first video for you in months, and I will see you later. Bye.